May of 2018, I traveled to Mozambique in Southeast Africa to co-instruct a macrophotography workshop. The country shares borders with the Indian Ocean, South Africa, Malawi, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Eswatini, and Zambia. I really didn't know a lot about Mozambique before traveling there, but with a little bit of research I found out that the Portuguese had colonized Mozambique around 1500, and in 1975 Mozambique gained its independence with the uh, Filimo party, and not long after that, leading up until the 90s, they were involved with a pretty violent civil war between the Filimo and Renamo parties. This violence really affected the national park where we taught the workshop, uh, Gorongosa National Park. A lot of the large mammals in the park, like elephants and buffalo and wildebeest and uh, zebra, were hunted nearly to the point of extinction for food or ivory during the Civil War. So the park is still very much in a state of uh, recovery and restoration. Heading out from the airport in Beira, we started the five plus hour drive on really pretty rough roads to Gorongosa National Park, uh, which is in the center of Mozambique. Chitango was the name of the camp where we stayed throughout the trip. And um, although the roads are technically paved, they were in such rough shape, there'd be hours I couldn't go you know, much above 15, 20 miles an hour or even shift above second gear. So it's really slow going. Once we got to the park, I was struck by these beautiful green trees called fever trees. They're called this because uh, they grow in swampy areas where mosquitoes and uh, malaria are really common. Also sprinkled across the landscape were old Portuguese ruins. We're here in the dry season, so the days are really hot and dusty, but the nights were surprisingly cool and humid. Uh, a pleasant contrast. Each morning we'd head out in groups and spend most of the day just looking for insects. Um, a lot of the landscape was dominated by termite mounds. A lot of clumps of vegetation and hills were really just termite mounds. One insect I was really excited to see in the park were the uh, stock-eyed flies. These are flies with their compound eyes out on the tips of super elongated stalks. This here is a diasomopsis species. There were other stock-eyed flies around too, like this uh, diopsis species. A little bit different, note how the head is a little bit more reddish in coloration. I unfortunately didn't get as many great shots of these, but here is a portrait of a diopsis species. When we were out in some of the more open habitats, we were required to have an armed guard with us to protect against the possibility of large mammal attacks. A worry I have when I'm out in the field is accidentally stepping on some of the more cryptic insects you might find. Um, this mantid was almost invisible among the dry grass, so I had to go about carefully. I found that a lot of mantids are really pretty cooperative subjects, and um, they're a lot of fun to photograph. They have, especially with their pseudo-pupils, this kind of seeming intelligence about them. This is a seven-shot focus stack. Here's a really cool immature mantis I found in an open area. I'd love to see what it looks like as an adult with those pointy compound eyes. I'd never been to Africa before this trip, so pretty much every arthropod I found was something new and interesting. Um, I really love these fulgoroid plant hoppers. They have such weird faces and antennal placement. Here's a uh, coccinella a lady beetle. I have no idea what species it is, but beautiful kind of pink elytra. There was an amazing diversity of Iranians, or orb weavers including this uh, Gastera cantha falcocornis, or uh, spiny kite orb weaver, with these huge red devilish horns on the abdomen. Beautiful spider. 
Now this weird tiny little orb weaver is called Isoxia tabulata and the common name is Biscuit Kite Spider. I guess because it kind of looks like a biscuit? I don't know. Now this is one of the most amazing finds of the trip. This is one of the largest spiders I've ever seen. It's Nephila senegalensis, the golden orb weaver. And with a leg span of almost five inches, um, some say it can even catch small birds in its web. And I believe it, huge spider. I twisted the tip of the leaf that this bristly little Tamisid was on upwards and I chose a low angle to get a little bit of the sky in the background. Funny little face it's got. A bit more of a classic crab spider face here. Um, this one looks like it maybe just got done eating a moth or something. I see some scales on the interior part of those forelegs. Another common sight around the Chitango camp were these warthogs. I would often see them rolling around in the mud, keeping cool and keeping insects off of them on hot days. Apparently they have pretty poor eyesight. I might be standing just a few feet away and then all of a sudden they'd be startled by my presence. These little vervet monkeys were all over the camp as well and um, if you weren't paying attention at breakfast they'd uh, steal it. honestly got really pretty scared when this huge male baboon screamed at me in the woods when I was photographing spiders. Now, be careful not to disturb me because they can really sting. As you heard Peter say there, you don't always want to mess with ants. They're distasteful, they can bite, they can sting, and uh, a lot of insects and spiders know this and take advantage of it through mimicry. It's to your advantage to look like an ant. This is actually a katydid nymph here. Notice that little tuck of green on the abdomen to give the illusion of a more slender waist. A lot of jumping spiders also mimic ants. This little Mexicala species jumping spider would uh, wave its forelegs around, kind of like the uh, frantic searching of ant antenna. Now this Murmuragni species male has a constriction in the cephalothorax and an elongated pedestal to sell the appearance that he has more body segments than he actually does, but even though he's a pretty good mimic, those jumping spider eyes give him away. And here's a really beautiful Murmuragni species that um, has evolved to look really just like its model, a Tetraponera ant, which you see here. And uh, note the uh, dark staining around those rear eyes to look like the compound eyes of the ant. And for me, easily, one of the most amazing things I saw on the trip were these enormous Hylus species jumping spiders. This female here was probably one of the largest jumping spiders I've ever handled, and um, I think these Hylus are some of the largest jumping spiders in Africa. It's amazing to hold a saltacid of this size. You can almost feel the tarsal claws and the weight of them. It's completely unlike uh, any other jumping spider I've handled. Even though I've spent a large portion of my life looking for and interacting with jumping spiders, the excitement to hold and see something like this never wanes. And this wasn't the only Hylus we found. Um, there are also possibly the same species, but maybe a different coloration, these huge golden yellow spiders too. This big guy is also, I suspect, a Hyla species, but I don't know who he is. So if you know, let me know. And here is Portia, P-O-R-T-I-A, a tiny little jumping spider famous for its unique hunting behavior. I was surprised by this little female's odd jerky movement, and on a technical note, it's hard not to blow out those white hairs. 
I found a huge diversity of jumping spiders out in some of these more open, grassy habitats. This guy's got a oxyopid, a lynx spider. Some saltacids really shine from a dorsal perspective. This one has really, really nice markings. When around trees, it's always a good idea to take a closer look at their trunks. And within the bark, there's a lot of exciting finds. For example, this selenopid spider blends right in with the texture and its camouflage is really effective and they have a pretty distinctive eye arrangement too. Looking like just a little bit of lichenous bark, these owlfly larvae were nearly invisible. There were solifugids, also known as camel spiders or sun spiders, all over the grounds at night. And um, I was really excited to see them because I'd only ever seen one before in New Mexico years ago. Here I am gently fishing out a large tarantula from a tree. And I don't know that much about tarantulas, but I think this is a baboon tarantula, one common in the pet trade. Millipedes are a common sight as well. Some of them really large. Up towards the front of this millipede there on the side, you see those little white specks. These are mites, and um, I don't know what kind of mites these are or what the relationship with the millipedes might be, so get in contact if you know. Although spiny and formidable in size, this armored katydid is completely harmless, and it's one of the heaviest bugs I've ever picked up. This is a massive tenebrionid, a darkling beetle. I nearly stepped on this huge dung beetle in the middle of a path. Towards the end of the trip, someone had found a stick with an enormous caterpillar on it, and that was one of the nice things about the trip was that everyone was looking for bugs, so all the eyes we had out in the field just multiplied the amount of interesting finds we found. I really appreciated the chance to go to Gorgosa, and it's a, an amazing place with some beautiful spiders and insects.